my favorite of the Chubby Buckle films. Wow, there are so many. <laughs> uh, I think, what was it, the, the mummy? The Mabel's mummy was actually uh, Chubby's attempt to get into the Hollywood mainstream. Seeing this mummy trek across the streets and frighten all these women. Very well done. The, the King Tut craze. I mean, because Chubby was as versatile as he was, he was able to tie in with anything. I mean, like he could he could do anything. And so, America's very enthused with a mummy exhibit that's traveling the country. And uh, Chubby basically tried to get on that train and get into the more mainstream commercial movie business. And he, I guess, he wanted to make something that's uh, widely recognizable, something that. Uh, wide audience can relate to. Well, America was just crazy with this, right? And so it made perfect sense to just tie in a mummy. I mean, that people do this all the time today, like extreme sports you'd see in the movies now. Uh, you know, anything that's going on in the headlines, I'm gonna try to put, I, it, I, don't, I don't think he's a sellout for doing that. I think he was a pioneer, if anything. I think by cashing in on the mummy craze at that time in history, also brought about the reality of war. Yeah, the war effort was very important to Chubby. He uh, originally tried to enlist, but due to uh, some health problems that he didn't realize he had, uh, he wasn't able to uh, to enlist. And so he he felt that he could still try and, and do his part as a you know standing citizen to uh, to entertain. And also, I believe he uh, spoke out at rallies for like war bonds and offered donations and things like that. And so, um, obviously, uh, the war was uh, you know very popular uh, here at home, trying to know what was going on with our, our troops overseas. Chubby never really recovered from it. He always wanted to pay homage to his friend. So as it turns out, not many people know this, that's why he always used the mummy. There was a lot of compassion in that film. A lot of compassion for that World War I veteran. I didn't know that his best friend was uh, that, uh, a dead veteran. Doing so, Chubby was just writing that in as a tribute to, uh, to, World, to World War I. Since he wasn't uh, able to go, um, I've actually read a few dissertations about the idea of movie stars living vicariously through uh, their characters and stories, and so uh, I would argue that him incorporating this World War I veteran is in fact Chubby wanting himself, wishing he had been a World War I veteran. It showed how the things can be right in front of our eyes and we don't even see them. So I believe it brought an awareness in the guise, again, of a sort of marketing trickery way to go, which is very, very smart and wise for filmmakers. With the mother-in-law. When that's where the whole mother-in-law uh, stereotype uh, came from. I enjoyed it and I think it was because of the mother-in-law, the relationships that, you know, that go on between there and his reaction just, you know, it still translates now. <laughs> it still speaks to the masses, so I think that was pretty great. He created that stereotype. He created that stereotype that was echoed in still today in films about that pesty mother-in-law. The effects were so well done. Man, he just knew how to reflect reality. You know? They say, is that, you know, is, is film a reflection of mass consciousness or is mass consciousness a reflection of film? I think Chubby excelled in making film a reflection of mass consciousness.